What's up carnivores? Zach here with American Smoke, and today we're frying my first turkey. I don't know if y'all fried a lot of turkeys before, but I've never done it, and so I'm a little bit uneasy about it, to be honest with you. I'm as nervous as a long tail cat in a room full of rocking chairs. <laughs> I have put this video off like the plague. Completely missed Thanksgiving, completely missed it. But today's the day. We got the turkey ready. I got my cooker all cleaned up, ready to rock and roll. We got the loco out here, ready to rock. I got a fire extinguisher <laughs> just in case, but don't worry. I know what I'm doing. I have done my research and I'm gonna be going step by step over everything that you need to know and everything that you need to do to fry the perfect turkey for your next big cook. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is you wanna get yourself a big tub of peanut oil. So make go out to uh, whoever you bank with and take out a second mortgage on your home and then go get you some peanut oil. A uh, couple gallons, I think that's like so many quarts, I don't know, it's the size they sell. I just know that it made me throw up a little bit when I had to pay for it. This is a cooker that Loco makes that's specifically made for frying turkey. It's even got a sensor right here that if you go over 400 degrees, it automatically cuts off the flame. That way you don't have to worry about your grease getting too hot. So uh, you're wanting to cook your turkey at about 350 degrees. You want to float maybe a little above, but more below 325 to 350 is what's recommended. We're gonna be aiming for 350 all the way through as close as possible on this cook. But like I said, if it gets over 400, this machine will cut the gas off automatically. Let's go ahead and get our peanut oil into the loco cooker. Now I am adding every bit of this today because it's everything that I've got. Now, a technique that you can use to make sure that your, that your turkey, one, gets fully submerged, and then two, doesn't cause oil to roll out over the top, I'm not gonna do it, but you can do it. That is to put water in so much, or put your turkey in, put your water in, and see how much water you need to fully submerge your turkey. Then you, you take your turkey out and let it dry a little bit. And that's kind of a safe way to know how much oil to put in. Like I said, I'm not gonna do that. It just seems like a hassle. I, I, I'm more of a fingers crossed type of guy. You know what I'm saying? And so I know that that's not gonna roll over. We're gonna heat that up and we're gonna get our turkey ready. Uh, we're gonna be heating this oil 350 degrees. Should take a little while with this river wind blowing the way that it is today. It's, uh, it's pretty terrible, but let's go ahead, get this turned on and get our turkey seasoned up. If you do get yourself one of these uh, loco cookers, make sure that you've got your grease in the pot before you ever fire this thing up. These pots are made out of aluminum and it'll burn through that thing like hot butter. Okay, so what I did was I just took this bird out of the bag, I drained all the water out of it, I patted it dry, and then I stuck it in the fridge and let the air get some more moisture off of the skin. Now you're still gonna have a good bit of moisture coming out of these birds. As you can see, I've got a little bit pulled up in there. But all you wanna do is you wanna examine your cavities, you're gonna have your giblets, things like that in there. You wanna make sure you get these out of there. So on one end, like I said, you're gonna have those, those giblets, and that's gonna usually be at the top end where your breast and your neck is, and then you're gonna flip it over and check out the posterior cavity, and what you're gonna find there is gonna be your turkey neck. Now you can do what you want to with that, Typically, uh, if I'm smoking it, I smoke it and turn it into like an appetizer. But uh, today, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be discarding it. So what you wanna do is get you some paper towels, dry this off, and then we're gonna be injecting it. And so one of the most important things for you to remember when you're getting ready to fry a turkey is to fully and completely let it thaw. You do not want to be messing with no hot grease, 
and no turkey if it's got a big chunk of ice in the middle of it because that's going to cause some explosions when it hits that grease and it's going to put you at risk whoever's around at risk you can cause fires you know i'm sure you've heard stories of people frying turkeys and having fires on their hands uh, we're going to be going over all the steps necessary to prevent that today but that's step number one is if you're planning on frying a turkey you get that thing into the refrigerator five to seven days if not more before you plan on frying it make sure it's fully thawed check inside the cavity for ice if you don't find any ice next steps dry it off as much as humanly possible you don't want any more moisture than you have to have going into that grease next steps is clean up your skin around the neck just a little bit do a little clean up job and you don't have to it's not going to affect anything it's just cosmetics as far as I'm concerned, this bird is ready for seasoning and uh, injecting. So now that we've got it dry, we're gonna get into the next steps. Step number one is you can remove this uh, thermometer that they put in it that's supposed to pop out when the turkey gets to temp. We're not gonna be needing that today. We're gonna go ahead and get out our Tony Satchery's Creole Butter Injection. You can make your own but this stuff's excellent and you can get it for a few bucks at the grocery store. And guess what? If you get the kit like I've got, it already comes with an injector needle with it, which is huge because this is one less thing to have to worry about and you just get rid of it at the end of the cook or you can keep it as a, a tool to put in your barbecue arsenal. All right, so you'll open up your, uh, your injector here. The needle is inside all you do just screw that on nice and tight. And then what we're gonna be doing is you need to make sure you shake this up a little bit. We're gonna be injecting the majority of this bottle into this bird. Here's a little look at what we're using. Now they make several types. I smoked a turkey for Thanksgiving this year. I didn't do a video on it, but I did smoke a turkey. And what we did was we used the uh, butter and jalapeno from Tony Satchery's and that smoked turkey and several people told me it was the best turkey they'd ever had and so I think that whichever one you choose to go with you're not going to be disappointed now what you want to do when you're injecting these turkeys is you just want to find the thick portions of your breast and all over just go in deep inject and pull out you're injecting as you're pulling out and then you're just going to turn the needle pop it push a little bit more pull out. You're just changing angles, really diversifying where you're putting that injection. That way, when you cut into it, you don't have these big pockets of injection. And that's going to make a huge difference in the overall quality of your bird at the end of your cook. Pump in, change directions until you feel like you have gotten a good amount of seasoning all throughout those breasts. Now, I'm going to be injecting the breasts most heavily but I'm also gonna be injecting the thighs, the legs, and I'm gonna get some into the wings as well. When you go into the legs, same principle. Go in, inject a little bit, change angles, inject, change, change angles, and inject. You're gonna see your bird plump up big time doing this process. Then we're gonna be going into the thighs, and so the thighs are down here just picture a, a chicken quarter, and so your thighs are right there. Go in, inject, change angles, inject, come in from a different spot. Today we're seasoning this turkey with the Cajun two-step seasoning from our friend uh, Stell Cracker. Pretty sure most people know about that guy. He's a riot. I'm gonna flip this turkey over, and we're just going straight onto the bird. I don't know how much of this season is gonna make it onto the bird, considering. The wind is uh, pretty terrible. It's, it's, it's pretty terrible. Probably should have done this beforehand, but like I told y'all, I don't know about y'all, but like I said, I don't fry a whole lot of stuff. And uh, this thing's got me a little bit nervous. 
Now some people say don't season the outside of the bird before you put it into the grease because the grease is just going to wash it off. But you know what? I don't care. Uh, if I get even, if even 10% stays on the bird, that's enough for me. I'm going to squirt that all over this turkey, sort of rub it on. That way we've got that season on the inside and on the outside. All right, so the last thing to do is to try desperately to get some of this stuff onto this turkey. <laughs> this wind, it's a nightmare. It is a nightmare. It's like all on my glove. We've got a break in the wind. Maybe we can get some seasoning on this turkey. What do y'all think? Three second break in the wind. I just hope this stuff ain't got too much cayenne pepper in it. Wind turn around and put it in my eyes for being a smart mouth. Get a little deodorant in there, you know. You might be wondering why I'm out here like this. It's always best to get into an open area to do this because uh, if you do have an over overspill or an overflow of grease coming out of your uh, fryer or any kind of issue, you put your home, uh, your garage, whatever it is at risk, uh, you can do what you feel like is the right thing to do. But uh, best practice is to be out in the open or maybe on a hard concrete surface. But my studio is below my house and I really did not want to uh, have a fire below my house. So we're gonna do it out here in the yard. Let's go. Right, so now that we've got it seasoned, we're gonna be placing this up into the cavity. All you gotta do is just find your opening and give it just a little bit of encouragement. Just like that, our turkey's ready to rock and roll. Now our grease is up to temp. It's actually gotten just a little bit higher than 350. And so the next step in this process is to turn off your fire. You do not want to put the turkey in there with the fire on. If it does boil over, the grease would go land in the fire, cause big time problems. So this just completely eliminates that. Some people don't, I'm going to. Gonna be using an insulated glove to get this into the grease. You don't have to worry about that grease cooling down too quick or anything. Grease holds temp really well. You wanna lower this down slowly into your grease. Very slowly. Bigger is not better when you're frying. You wanna Max out around a 14 pound bird. All right. Hey, I'm still alive. <laughs> okay, so we've got it going now. Our grease is at a perfect 350. We're going to turn this back on. So now the process is pretty much three and a half minutes per pound. This was a 13.66 pound bird, which works out between 45 minutes and 50 minutes. Uh, we're going to be pulling it around that 47 minute mark. We're not even going to be going to time. We're going to be using the temp of the grease and the weight of the bird because that works pretty consistently from what I've from what I've learned the wind's about to take the lid of my pot we're gonna start that timer we'll see y'all here in a little bit uh, probably halfway through when we just check on how it's looking and then we'll be pulling it seeing how we did all right so we are about 35 minutes in we've got between 9 and 10 minutes left take a look we did go just a little bit short on our grease. You can see that everything's getting cooked, but we're going to have uh, the end of it. It's going to be just a little bit uh, pale compared to the rest of the bird. So lesson learned the hard way. We'll see y'all in about nine minutes. 
All right, so that's 47 minutes and some seconds. We did the math, that's what it needed to be. Let's go ahead, get this thing turned off and get it out of the grease. I'm not gonna lie to y'all, I'm happy this process is over. <laughs> I'm glad to have my first time uh, frying a turkey just almost behind me now. It really wasn't that bad, it's just, when you haven't done something like this before, it can be very nerve wracking. And that's why I wanted to make this video of my first time doing it. So that if there's anything that I learned that I can teach you, that's the best way to do it. Here we're coming out of the grease now. You want to lift it slowly out of the grease. See, there's a mistake that I made right there. It's going to be okay. I feel, Ooh, that thing looks pretty though, man. Just let that thing drain a little bit. Very pretty. Great color on this bird. And we're going to transition it over to the Drip EZ tub to continue to drain. And we're going to get a little bit more seasoning on it. So I don't know how many of you fry chicken, but typically uh, the way that my mama's always done it when she gets done frying it or french fries or whatever, you add a little bit more seasoning, some salt to it once you're done. While the grease is still hot, the outside of the bird is still moist, the river wind, still playing games. I now know what two-step seasoning looks like when it's on your eyeball. I made it inside these glasses. We're gonna get it with a little extra salt it's gonna make this skin just excellent, excellent, excellent. And that's really all we gotta do. We're gonna let that hang out for about 10 minutes and then we will be cutting into it and giving it a taste. All right, so we have got a nicely fried, crispy bird. I'm just gonna go ahead and take advantage of some of this, some of this crispiness right here. Oh, mama. Ooh. Ooh, that sounded terrible. That's fire. That's so good. I'm so happy. All right. Now we got to take it out of this contraption. Ooh, this bird is pretty, son. What y'all talking about? It's pretty. Now, to get this out of here, there's another adventure all in itself, I think. Well, I could probably get aggressive with it and get it out of there, but I don't think you have to. Well, yep, you got to. All right, y'all hold on. See if we can, there we go, there we go. We didn't have to booger nothing up too bad. <laughs> P-U-R-D-Y, pretty. Loco Cooker did a fine job, Ooh. fine job. Wow, check it out. Just big old chunk of crispy skin right there. That's just murdering me looking at it. Look at that. You're never gonna get nothing like that smoking. I'm not saying that a smoked turkey is not an ultra delicious turkey, but nothing replaces that. I'll tell you what, for my first fried turkey, so far I'm very pleased. Get this paper towel out of here. We've made it to my favorite portion of any and every cook, the portion where I get to taste some of the food that I've been cooking. We've got a beautiful Cajun injected, Cajun seasoned fried turkey here that is just everything that you're looking for when it comes to color, when it comes to texture. Nice, crispy skin. Let's go ahead, get a piece of that breast. The wings, everything is just cooked perfectly. The, the, the pick meat, the nibbling on this is gonna be phenomenal. Beautifully, just ultra juicy breast meat. The injection took care of that. 
Holy guacamole, man. Get a piece of that right there. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> it's like a turkey water balloon. <laughs> That's so good. That is so fire and it's so juicy. I mean, wow. So good. Got these little ultra crunchy pieces that didn't have anything attached to them. We're going to toss a little bit of that in with a bite here. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Wow. Mm. That is so good. Well, sometimes you got to step outside of your comfort zones. That's what I did today. I left the smoker behind, I left the oven behind, stepped into the fried turkey world. I'm glad I did. Next time I'm gonna be a whole lot more comfortable doing it. Just to recap, we injected this turkey, we seasoned it with some Cajun rub, we dropped it in the grease for three and a half minutes per pound, we fought the wind the entire time, and one, might I add. We pulled it out, let it rest for about 10 minutes, cut into it, delicious turkey, Hard to beat, hard to beat. Guys, if you uh, have any questions about anything that I did today or any recommendations of how to do a better job, I'll appreciate that. Y'all come over to American Smoke Carnivores on Facebook. It's a great group, I'm in there daily. Share some of your cooks with me. I love that sort of stuff. Thanks for watching, smoke on, and I'll see you guys in the next video. There's gonna be a little bit. There's no stopping that. Oh.